Hi everyone, welcome to the New Horizons Music Theory Teaser video in this our time of musical isolation. My name is Tierney and if you don't know me, I am the trumpet mentor for the concert band and symphonic band. So today's topic is key signatures are king, but why? And that why question is the one that I really want to address, but we're going to start with a speed round, who, what, when, where, why, how, on everything key signatures just to make sure that we're all on the same page going into this. So what is a key signature? Well, the key signature tells you which accidentals to play um, throughout a piece. And where is the key signature? It's up at the beginning of your piece, um, right about there. There's a little flat sign, so here we've got one flat. When is a key signature? Until further notice, sometimes all the way until the end of a piece. Who is the key signature? Key signature is king. Why and how? Join me as we find out. So key signatures are dependent upon the major scale. And I'm sure you've come across scales in your studies as you work through your instrument uh, method books and through pieces. Always your teachers are gonna be bringing you back to that major scale, and this is part of the reason why. So in order to figure out this major scale business, please see the handout that is attached to this video. And it's going to look something like this. And so what this is, is a representation of a keyboard piano. And if I had a piano, I would do this on piano, but I don't have one, so we're working on paper. Um, so a major scale is actually just a pattern of intervals, and that's what makes it sound right or wrong. When you play a wrong note in a scale, your ear actually knows it, even if your brain doesn't know this pattern, your ear is expecting it, and that's what makes notes sound right or wrong. And so let's figure out what this pattern is. Let's start with C major. That's kind of home base, at least for most band instruments. C major. So in order to play a C major scale, we would need to go from C to C. That takes us through a full octave. And if you know what the key signature of C major is, it's actually no sharps and no flats. So here on our, our keyboard representation, we're actually gonna be dealing with white keys only. So in order to play that scale, we would play C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And that would get us through our major scale. And so there's actually a set of intervals hidden in that scale that is true of all major scales. So if you don't know how the piano works, quick crash course. Going from a white key up to a black key is a half step. And from the black key to the next white key is a half step, half step, half step half step there because there's no black key. So each key to its next neighbor is a half step. And so when we play the C major scale using all of these white keys, we go from C, we skip over C sharp up to D. That gives us a whole step. Half step plus a half step is a whole. And then in order to get to E, same thing, another whole step. And then we get this tricky one going from white key to white key there's a half step. And then F to G, whole step, whole step up to A, whole step up to B, and last but not least, another half step. And so we wind up with this whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And that pattern is actually the governing pattern for a major scale. And that pattern stays true through every single scale. So this is our, our one octave diagram here, going from C to C. That pattern comes out the most friendly in C major because we don't have to deal with any black keys, but that pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, is going to be true for any scale that we so choose. So if we decide to pick another scale that we want to do, this pattern is gonna stay true. So let me just give a shout out to my band peeps and say, let's build a B-flat major scale. And if you already know what's in the key signature of B-flat major, don't think about it too hard yet. Let's build this pattern. So B-flat, hopefully you can see, is right there. And so we're actually starting on a black key this time. Ooh, but we still have to build that same pattern. So we're gonna need a whole step first, going from B-flat up to C, and then we need another whole step going up to D, and then another whole step 
Just kidding. We need a half step. I said that wrong. Whole, whole half. We need a half step. I tripped myself up. B flat to C. It's a whole step. C to D, whole step. D to E flat. There's your half step. There's that troublemaker. And now we need another whole step. Up to E would be a half, and up to F is a whole. And then another hole gets us up to G, and another hole gets us up to A. And our final half step is actually gonna take us back to, you guessed it, B flat. So there you can see our major scale, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And that brings us out with two of these, of these black keys that we're dealing with, two accidentals, B flat and E flat. And so if you knew ahead of time what was in the key of B flat major, you would have been thinking to yourself, two flats, B flat and E flat. And that's why they are obeying this pattern and staying true to the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half pattern. And that's what actually requires us to have those accidentals in there, is that pattern. Let's do one more of these. All right, I'm gonna give a shout out to the string players who really like to be in sharps. This time we're gonna do A major. So we're starting to get a little bit trickier with our key signatures. And again, you may know what's in the key signature of A major right off the top of your head, and you may not, but we're gonna find out momentarily. So there's our A, we're gonna start on there, and we're gonna need a whole step, which brings us up to B. And then we have to be kind of careful here because we need a whole step up from B, but going to that white key is only a half step because there's no black key in between. So we actually have to wind up on C sharp. There it is, there's your next whole step. And then here comes our half step that I screwed up last time, whole, whole, half. It's time for a half step. We're gonna go from C sharp to D. And then we need a whole step, taking us up to E. And wait, be careful, going from E up this next whole step is tricky because we have to avoid the fact that there's no black key there and go up a whole step, which is actually gonna take us over to F sharp. And from there, we need another whole step. And then we need a final half step. And that half step is gonna bring us back to A, as we would expect. So we still have our pattern, whole, whole, leaping up to that black key, half, whole, 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 half. That pattern is still true. And again, if you knew what was in the key signature of A major ahead of time, you would have known three sharps were coming at you, and that's where those black keys are appearing, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. And now you might be wondering, since I'm looking at this pattern, you might be tempted to tell me that these sharps appear in the order of C sharp, F sharp, and then G sharp. But I keep saying them in a very specific order, and that is not an arbitrary thing. So. Let's talk about the order that sharps and flats appear in because this seems like another very arbitrary thing in music. So the thing to know is that they always appear in that certain order and they will never ever change from that order. If you have one sharp and only one sharp, it will always be F sharp. If you have two sharps and only two sharps, it will always be F sharp and then C sharp. But what's the full order of that? Because you could, hypothetically, have up to seven sharps or more if you get into something really gnarly. You could have more, but what is the order of those sharps? So for me, I like to remember this with an acronym, but I'll tell you the order. For sharps, it's F, C, G, and then D, A, E, B. And for that, I like to use the acronym Father Carl Goes Down and Ends Battle. And the flats, are actually in perfectly reverse order of that, B-E-A-D-G-C-F. And for that, I use the acronym, it's a palindrome, Battle Ends and Down Goes Carl's Father. And so if you notice, those are exact opposites of each other, that the first sharp is F, and the first flat is B, and the last sharp is B, and the last flat is F. So they are perfect opposites. They're kind of just like passing each other. And so the way that I like to remember these is actually just by taking a chunk of each that the flats spell out a word, B-E-A-D, bead, like you're gonna make a necklace. 
So I remember the flats with those first four, and then I remember the sharps, the sharps with F, C, and G. And one of my students actually made up a word for that because that is not a word. And he tells me that the sharps go in the order the cug. And of course, once you get past F, C, and G, then you just have to do the flats backward. So bead backwards, D, A, E, B. And when you're in the flats, you do bead. And then if you get past those four, you just do the cug backwards, which is G, C, F. And so that, that kind of brings us down to how could that ever possibly work out that way? It's really great for me to sit here and say that the first sharp is always F sharp and the first flat is always B flat, but why? Who built this this way? How did this possibly happen? And the answer will lie in our fall music theory course, and it has something to do with the circle of fifths, if you've ever heard that. So we can definitely talk more about that another day, but I want to leave you with the all-important question of why? Why do we care about key signatures? Why does this matter? Because it's all good and well to know the theory behind this and whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, but who cares? Well, I think it's cool, number one, because I'm a nerd, but also it just helps you with your playing. It helps you to know these patterns and where they came from and how these key signatures are structured so that at a glance, if you see two sharps over there, you know that it's going to be F and C. If you see one flat, you know that it's B flat. And a lot of times, at least in treble clef, that top sharp, F sharp, a lot of people look at that and think it's an E sharp. And so now, after watching this video, you will know forevermore that if there is one sharp, it is F sharp. So let's talk about your homework, because I did promise to torture you all with some homework. You are going to build me an F sharp major scale. So you're gonna start on one of those black keys, an F sharp, and you're going to use that pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, to figure out which accidentals we need. And so you're on the honor system. I know a lot of you have charts and, and cheat codes for figuring out which keys go with which key signatures and what accidentals, but don't be looking at those. Figure this out using uh, our tried and true method here, the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So go ahead and build an F sharp major scale. and. Uh, if you really want to challenge, go ahead and try and play that on your instrument. Should be a good time. So when you have this all worked out and you think you know what accidentals are in F sharp major, go ahead and send me an email with that. I think that's it for now. Oh, and remember, bonus points. As you figure out which accidentals are in F sharp major, make sure you put them in the order that we talked about in this video. Make sure they're in the correct order. All right, thanks for listening, guys, and I hope you're all having fun and keeping the love of music alive. I'll see you soon.